Getting into a tornado on purpose has always been pick your spot and hope that luck and God is on your side, and that you accomplish your goal without anything worse than a few cuts. In this episode, we will explore the story of one man who saw these issues stand in the way of his dream, and how through his life in the fast lane helped shape his creation to go into the eye of the storm. Meet Steve Green, a former NASCAR driver and entrepreneur from Canton, Ohio. Green set out to become the first to be able to go within the eye of the vortex to gather data and imagery that, like many others, he hopes would uncover the answers to the mystery from within the storm. The unpredictable, impenetrable violence of tornadoes has been a mystery since the beginning of time. Traditional studies have provided some data from observation and outside measurements, but research inside a tornado's deadly funnel cloud has been virtually impossible. To achieve this ambitious goal, Steve set out to develop a first-of-its-kind storm-chasing vehicle, purposefully designed to get himself safely in and out of a twister. His dream would begin in the year 1994, by using his years of experience in the world of NASCAR. And in 1998, this dream would take shape. His creation, the Tornado Attack. Taking the frame of a six and a half ton custom built Baja racing truck as the base of the beast, the body would contain a reinforced roll cage covered entirely with 16 gauge steel and coated with a polyurethane impact resistant material. The windows separating the pilot from the elements are made up of bulletproof M10 Lexan plastic coated in a triple layer of DuPont Mylar film. With a 700 horsepower V8 engine at its heart and four wheel drive, the vehicle can tear across terrain that most vehicles would find impossible to travel even in the best of conditions. Though some would call him crazy and suicidal for wanting to drive into a tornado, after investing countless man-hours and $300,000 of work, Steve made sure that above all else, safety was his top priority. But Steve knew you needed more than just armor to survive the violent winds inside of a tornado. His NASCAR background taught him that wind was not just a deadly hazard inside a tornado, but on the racetrack too. Drivers! Pace car makes the turn to pit road, and here they come. in the middle and these guys are Dyson go ahead VP the aerodynamics of race cars are designed to keep the vehicle on the ground by using things like spoilers and canards to minimize the amount of wind under the car this keeps the vehicle glued to the pavement when traveling at high speeds reducing the chance of the car being thrown into the air 
That's why race cars are designed with lots of curves and edges, to make the car cut through the air like a knife through butter. However, winds inside of a tornado can be much greater than the ones experienced on the track. And wind directions in tornadoes are circular rather than head-on. Just adding a few aerodynamic parts to your car wouldn't be enough to keep you anchored. And tornado attack would need to be as low to the ground as possible to have a chance of riding out the winds. But you can only get so low to the ground before driving on rural roads become a hazard. But Steve came up with a way to solve this issue. Utilizing a custom-built hydraulic suspension system, the TA-1 can drop its frame flush to the ground, expelling 18,500 psi to remove 1.5 gallons of oil from the shocks in under a second, creating a kind of suction cup that can allow the vehicle to take on winds of up to 150 miles per hour without the risk of going airborne. The TA-1 is designed to park in front of the path of the tornado and suck to the ground and stay there and allow the tornado to pass. Air can't get under me. If the air can't get under me, it can't lift me. Therefore, it gives me a security. But it wasn't just all for the sakes of driving inside. Steve made sure that with a concept like this, it can serve several other purposes to the chasing community. Packed together with enough data and video recording equipment that would be enough to supply a normal chaser's three-car fleet. Steve was prepared to take a new quantum leap in storm chasing. Because of the speed and time in which tornadoes can form, travel, and disappear, finding the right storm with the right road to take him there has often been the bulk of all storm chasers' careers. With the most advanced technology he could get his hands on, even men like Steve struggled to find that one storm that would spawn just what he needed. The 2004 tornado season was well on its way to becoming one of the busiest year for twisters in recorded history, until it was outmatched in 2011. With such an active year, it came as a surprise how hard it was to find a tornado. But after weeks with little to show for his efforts, on a hot summer day in Kansas, he got his storm. In the middle of June, the Storm Prediction Center issued a moderate risk for severe weather over parts of central Oklahoma and Kansas. On June 11th, numerous tornadoes had touched down across the Midwest, most fairly weak with others scarring the ground. On June 12th, even more tornadoes were expected over Kansas. It held a promising outlook, and gathering a small team of chasers built up of fellow friends, photographers, and videographers, Steve headed out towards Wichita, Kansas to test his luck. By 6 o'clock p.m. Central Daylight Time, the skies over Kansas were beginning to come alive. Thick with moisture, conditions were becoming even more ripe for thunderstorms to intensify. Moving out from Wichita, Steve and the team headed south along Interstate 35. And just under an hour later, the first tornado warning was issued over the town of Mulvane, Kansas. Following the storm southeast of the town, by 7.10 p.m., the first funnel began to appear from the clouds. Yeah. It's tightening up! Go! Tighten it up! Oh yeah! It's about go time! <laughs> oh, look at the little funnel! Here it comes, Steve! Steve, not much time! Five minutes! Our Steve's punching! It's gonna happen back here! It's coming down! Acting quickly, Steve built a plan of attack, as 15 minutes later, the Vortex made contact. With the tornado moving west and the team moving east down Highway 53, 
the convoy quickly stopped and began final preparations for intercept. There it is, funnel cloud. Let's go! Right now. Oh yeah. Wow. Whoa! Look at that. Holy shit! Hey, is that is that Steve? Yeah, that is. Go east, guys! I cannot believe this is happening. We need to get Steve back here. Years of waiting had taken but seconds to accomplish. On June 12, 2004, Steve became the first man in history to drive into a tornado on purpose. The first time that the combination of engineering, science, determination, and sheer dumb luck had allowed history to be made. This tornado right here, 15 minutes ago I drove my truck inside. But the moment of celebration would be suddenly met with the reality that tornadoes brought with them. Picture right now. There goes somebody's house. Oh, no. Oh. That's a problem. Rope it out. Come on, we gotta go see if these people need help. We gotta find that house and help them. There's probably people hurt. Let's get them. Load them up. Hey, are you okay? Where are you at? I don't see her. I got them out of here. There's a lot of debris over here. Call everyone. You alright? Steve's dream had marked a turning point in the history book of storm chasing. Steve's own creation proved that instead of having to risk the possibility of deploying unmanned probes that could be missed, researchers could now hunt down and intercept twisters in ways that probes or even radar could not do before. That's Steve on the left side of the screen driving directly toward the twister. He says his fact-finding mission took him directly into the vortex. And looking up, it looked like the inner side of a cinnamon roll. We ran up to the house and we found a lady and her son. Steve's mic was still on. It's okay, buddy. You're going to be okay. So you can hear as he begins pulling a family out of the home's basement. She was talking about not having liability insurance on the car that was about 400 feet across the street. Other than a few dents in its armor, the tornado attack car made it through just fine. Steve prepares for what Mother Nature delivers next. There's a core that is shared by two updraft bases. Yeah. All right, we got, what is going on there? That's pretty weird. Is that yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at that flanking line. To this day, the current state of man and machine is unknown. While it has been said that Steve moved away from storm chasing and lives with his own devices, the fate of his red monster remains to be seen. Almost seven years after its historic moment, 
The vehicle would be seen up for auction on eBay in May of 2011. The reasoning behind this was another dream of Steve's. To walk into a tornado with a custom armor suit and weights. At a starting bid of $75,000, Steve and his group would help the winner to set out into Tornado Alley to help them drive into their own tornado with the vehicle. Since then, there has been very little to no information on the whereabouts of its location or condition. Some speculation says that the vehicle has been scrapped, others debating if it had either been left in a garage and forgotten, or had become part of someone else's collection. In either case, it cannot be said without a doubt that Steve's Beast would live on in the record books and go on to inspire several other like-minded people to create their own vehicles to take on Mother Nature. <laughs>